Lord richly blesses you for it. And God richly blesses us as we open up our hearts to receive as Reverend Redding comes to preach what God has laid on his heart. Let's give God the attention he deserves. Sir, God bless you. Well, it's good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. It's good to give God praise as always. Thankful for the opportunity to be able to share the word of God tonight. I'm going to be in the book of Genesis tonight. The book of Genesis, I'm going to start reading at uh, verse 26. So Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Just a few verses. And my text is going to be from Genesis chapter 2. But in Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 to 28, the Bible tells us, And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image and the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. That's probably a a verse of scripture that is politically incorrect today, but... It's correct according to the word of God. I just have to keep it right there. And then on in verse 28, he says, And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And then I'm going to use a verse of scripture for my text. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And with God's help tonight, I would like to preach for just a little while on on this thought or title, The Breath of God. Pastor Dave, can you please pray, sir? Amen. The breath of God. Most living things need oxygen to survive. Oxygen helps organisms grow, reproduce, and turn food into energy. And we get the oxygen that we need by breathing through our nose and mouth into our lungs. Oxygen gives our cells the ability to break down food in order to get energy we need in order to survive. You know, it's probably one of those things we don't think about a whole lot because God gave us that, that breath to breathe, and we just don't think about it a whole lot. But if we don't have it, then, of course, we're not going to live. And as I was thinking about this message, I wasn't quite sure if I was going to uh, preach this message because um, I was thinking about something else. And then we were in Bible study yesterday, and, and Pastor Dave mentioned something about the breath of God. I said, hmm, maybe that's the confirmation that I need. And so I decided to, to, to move on with, with this message, and I started working on it sometime last week. But it's one of those things that we don't, perhaps we don't think about a whole lot. But we need that breath in our lungs in order to survive. And my mind went back to was a, a football player some years ago. And this man, he, he had a, a, a baby mama, and he decided, I guess he didn't, you know, she was pregnant at the time. And he didn't want to take care of the child. And and this is a true story. Um, He decided to um, have someone murder her. And he, I think the, the, the mom was about eight months pregnant or so. And fortunately, the baby survived, but the mother didn't. But in the process of that baby, um, you know, the mom had passed, she died, and the baby was not able to get the oxygen that he needed. And so as a result, 
he was born with cerebral palsy because he didn't have that oxygen going to his brain. So we need oxygen. It's very important. How can we neglect such a great thing? But isn't it amazing how our God created the very air that we breathe? We read about Adam here in the garden, and the, the creation of man was, was absolutely uh, amazing. It really is. But here, of course, Adam, before God breathed into him, he was cold, he was stiff, he was lifeless. And so it is when a man or a woman don't have the Spirit of God in them. Before we get saved, we are lifeless. We don't have the Spirit of God where we're cold. I like how Paul said it in the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. He says, But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, he says, Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace are you saved. You see, to be quickened is to restore to life or consciousness. It is to revive. It is to give fresh vigor. We all face challenges at one point or another in our lives. But it feels good to have a fresh start. It feels amazing when we have the breath of God and we start to feel alive. And that brings me to my first point in talking about a fresh start. Adam was lifeless, didn't have no life. He was, you could say he was in his uh, humble beginnings. When you think about how the Lord created him from the dust of the earth, I would say that's very, very humbling. You know, none of us can say, oh, we're something great, we're this, we're that. No, uh, we were created from the dust of the earth. Well, not me. My mama gave birth to me. I get it. Uh, but isn't it something when we die, we go right back to being to dirt. It's very humbling. Oh, no, not me. <laughs> I don't know if there's a such thing as clean dirt. You know, it is, it is what it is. But before all of this, everything was, you know, be, be, before he, he fell into sin, everything was perfect. There were no mistakes. And I, and I can only imagine when, when Adam opened his eyes and he saw God uh, face to face. He saw his, his very creator. And many of us, uh, many of us we, we know the story and how that him and his wife Eve, they, they fell into sin because they decided to partake of the forbidden fruit of that tree of, of knowledge of good and evil. Of all the trees in the garden, the garden and, and, and so many fruits and things uh, in it, they decided, well, I'm just kind of going to do it my own way. I know the Lord said don't do it, but I'm going to do it anyway. And of course, Eve was beguiled by the serpent and the serpent uh, eventually was cursed, and they were all cursed. That's just how it is. They fell into sin. And it's beautiful. Before all of that took place, everything was great. It was, it was wonderful. There was no, no, no sin. And this is, when you think about it, especially you've been living for so long, and you look at all the things around in the world, it's kind of hard to imagine a world without sin. Because people are just so evil, and it's you just you, you hear about different things all the time, and you wonder, like, wow, how could how can somebody even do a, a such a thing? But when they fell into sin, they had to be kicked out of the garden. And of course, they tried to hide them or cover themselves with fig leaves, and it just was not good enough. They needed a sacrifice, and the good Lord had provided that sacrifice. When a person falls into sin, you can't do it your own way. You have to go to God. And you need to get forgiveness for your sins. But I like how God, even in the midst of all of that, the Lord was going to help them out anyway. The Lord was going to give them another chance uh, anyway. And sometimes it's like that when you fall into sin, you're doing your own thing. God says, all right, I'm not going to judge you uh, just yet. I'm, I'm not going to uh, just do a, a, a way with you. No, uh, I'm going to give you another chance. Uh, I'm going to give you a fresh start. Uh, I'm going to make you over. Oh, uh, why? Because our God is a merciful God. Our God is very merciful. A God of second chances. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 18, we have this illustration of the potter. Jeremiah, chapter 18, verses 1 through 6, the Bible tells us the word which came to Jeremiah from, from the Lord, saying, Arise, and go down to the potter's house, 
and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels, and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter, saith the Lord? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, and he says, so are ye in mine hand, O house of Israel. You talk about getting a fresh start. You talk about getting another chance. You know, sometimes we do things and, and we fall we find ourselves in a real bad way. We find ourselves perhaps feeling so guilty and feeling so condemned, uh, uh, feeling like we just have all these regrets. And the Lord, you know, if we just come to him just real humble and, you know, just a humble vessel in the hand of God. God is saying, I can make you over. All of the mistakes that you uh, are, are guilty of, all the sins that you're guilty of. He's, the Bible says that uh, they were marred uh, in, in, his, in his very hand. And so God says, okay, that's okay. I can make it over. I can do it over. Why? Again, because of that grace, uh, because of that mercy, and because of that love. And sometimes we may count ourselves out, and maybe there are those in the world that will count us out. But God says, no, uh, as long as there's breath in your body, you can make it. As long as you have breath in your lungs, uh, you can live. It's called grace and mercy. God didn't have to do it, but he did. I like what the prophet Isaiah said in Isaiah chapter 43, verse 25. He says, I, even I, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for mine own sake and will not remember thy sins. We're the ones that like to remember our sins. And maybe we have those regrets like, oh, my goodness, how could I have done such a thing? And, and, and really, it's just the enemy lying to us, want to bring up our past. But the Lord says, I'm not going to remember them anymore. And, you know, when a person really means business with the Lord and they really repent of their sins, they change and say, God, forgive me for my sins. Uh, I should not have done that. I should not have said that. I should not have went there. I should not have went there. God says, I'm not going to remember it anymore. We don't have to keep bringing it up. And then when those, uh, those thoughts do come, we can rebuke those thoughts in the name of Jesus. A uh, devil, you are a liar. I don't have to believe uh, uh, what you're saying. No, my Bible tells me that greater is he that sent me than he that sent the world. I'm a child of God. I don't have to walk around feeling hopeless, feeling like I can't make it, feeling constantly just condemned. We need the breath of God, a fresh start. You know, and it's like that sometimes. You may be starting a new job or something like that or, or moving or whatever it is, and you just really needed that uh, a, a fresh start. I needed to, to start over. I'm trying to uh, get away uh, or just whatever the case is. And God says, I have a way for you. I'll give you that, that fresh start that you've been looking for. The breath of God. It's amazing how the Lord was able to breathe into the very nostrils of Adam. And he became a living soul. And it's no wonder why, of course, we were made in his image. And it's no wonder why the enemy does uh, so many things to mar the image of God. Why? Because he hates God. And every time he sees us, he is reminded of who God is. And that's another humbling thought. Wow, the Lord made us in his image. We're not dogs. We're not robots. We're not animals. Unfortunately, there are many people who are identifying as animals. That is so silly to me. It is ridiculous. And, you know, should you dare say something about it, you're just a, a hate monger and all. No, people are losing their minds. If God wanted us to be a dog, we would be a dog. But that's not what he called us to be. He made us in his image. And, and so we can rejoice. Man, God is good. God is amazing. God is awesome. He's the creator of the world, the entire universe. Uh, we don't have to be ashamed. No, we're not crazy either. We're not right minds. But man became a living soul. This word breathe here, it means to puff, inflate, or blow hard. In John chapter 20, verse 22, it says, when he had said this, he breathed on them. This was Jesus. He breathed on them and saith unto them, receive ye the Holy Ghost. 
Ooh, thank God for the Holy Ghost. I was listening to something today, and I wasn't, I didn't know what the person was, was preaching about, but sometimes when I'm driving, I like to um, listen to some messages, and it was just amazing uh, how he was sharing some of these things, and um, it, it was just, my mind was just blown. You know, by the word of God, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just blown by the word of God. It, it's so amazing to me, but when I heard some of these things, I said, wow, that's so awesome because I'm sharing some things along uh, those lines. But he told them to receive ye the Holy Ghost. The word ghost here comes from a Greek word, pneuma. And it is the third person of the triune God, the Holy Spirit, co-equal, co-eternal with the Father and the Son. It means a current of air, breeze, a movement of air or a gentle blast of the wind. And so when you look at this word, too, it's a, it can serve as a prefix And we'll talk about that. Noom, meaning air, gas, lung, or respiration. So anytime you see those letters, P-N-E-U-M, it's letting you know it's a prefix and it's dealing with air, as in a pneumatic tool. When I was a mechanic in the Army, we had pneumatic tools. Why? Because you're going to reach muscle failure trying to remove lug nuts off of a huge truck by hand. It's going to take a long time. So you need to plug into uh, that, that air compressor. You plug it in, and it makes things a whole lot easier. It gets the job done faster. It's more efficient. and You don't have to waste all your time and energy, and you're stuck on something. But it's a pneumatic tool containing or operated by air or gas under pressure. But how much more when it comes to the Holy Spirit? And God is our He's our pneuma. He's he's helping us to be more efficient. He's helping us to get the job done. It's it's, it's hard to, I don't don't see how some people do it, but it's hard to operate without the Spirit of God. It's hard to, I mean, it just, life is just so much harder when you don't have the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit convicts us. He guides us. He leads us to all truth. Uh, He's the third person of the Godhead. He's not a a figment of our imagination. He's not some invisible force. He's he's not just some uh, out there entity. No, he is God. And so the person, as they were preaching, they were sharing this uh, this message. I I thought it was so, when he was talking about the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues and and different things, and he was saying, he says, speaking in tongues is, because sometimes people say, I guess they could say some weird things, maybe trying to encourage somebody to, to pray in the Holy Ghost. And he was like, the Holy Ghost is not saying, uh, bippity bop, give me this slop. I was like, <laughs> I'm not going to say his name, but you can probably take a good guess uh, if you've been around for a while. I mean, he'd be saying some stuff, but I thought it was so hilarious. <laughs> bippity bop, he didn't give me this slop. I was like, Wow. That is not the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is a person, and he he abides uh, with us. And it's amazing how, you know, when you you think about the Holy Ghost, a lot of times he is in the background, and he he probably don't get all the the credit, so to speak. But uh, even Jesus had such a high reference for him, and they realized, you know, there is, you know, you can get forgiveness for anything. But he said, there is no forgiveness for the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. That's how important the Holy Ghost is. That's how, that's how much we, we need him. Some people say, well, that Holy Ghost stuff, that speaking in tongues, is, it's not for us today. And some people are actually afraid. But why would you be afraid of the power that you need? Think about it. You know, as a mechanic, why would I be afraid of air tools and this is the power that I need? Otherwise, man, I'm going to be real strong. I, there's no time to be afraid of the power. It's there for my convenience. It's there to help me be better. It's there to help me to be more efficient. It's there to help me in my job. But how much more when it comes uh, to the Holy Ghost? Uh, the Holy Ghost is there to help us. Jesus says, I'm going to send you another comforter. I don't know how some people think. We, we, we need the Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Ghost. We need the breath of God helping us. God is in control of everything. Let me say that again. God is in control of everything. We don't have to worry. 
And it's good to think about these scriptures, especially you're going through something very tough. In the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 9 through 11, the Bible tells us, Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. And then, you know, as he was being obedient, he says, So I prophesied as he commanded me. And the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dried, and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. You know, it can seem hopeless sometimes when you're in a dry uh, moment. Perhaps looking at those bones, he was thinking, this is ridiculous. How, how, how are these bones going to live? And, you know, I believe he was being careful. Uh, Son of man, shall these bones live? Uh, I, yes, Lord, you know. I'm not going to say nothing crazy. You, you know all things, God, that these bones can live or not. You just tell me what to do, and I'll do it. And so sometimes it may actually look like the situation is far gone and there is no more hope. But when we get the breath of God in our body and our soul and our lungs, we realize, wait a minute, it's not just me doing this on my own. I have a comforter that is helping me. Or why should I go through this life feeling like there is no hope? There's always hope in Almighty God. There's always hope. We have to hold on and trust in him. When Adam received the breath of God, he became a living soul. He became alive. So did he wonder why, especially someone is needing CPR, and you have to breathe into them so that they can come back. And something's wrong, something is off. They need some air in their lungs. But Adam became a living soul. And when you think about this, the soul, there's so many things that can be shared. But why is it that so many people are hurting in the world? Because there's a void in the soul. Something is missing. Something is off. And many are trying to do it their own way and find satisfaction, but they can't. The Bible tells us in 1 John chapter 2, verse 16, it says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, he said, it's not of the Father, but it's of the world. People are constantly looking and searching for something to satisfy. I saw a story in the news the other day about this man who's, I guess he's an entertainer. And they were talking about all his different baby mamas. Well, he said, well, the first one wasn't really just his baby mama. He was actually married to her. I said, okay. But then I was thinking, because, I, I mean, I didn't really follow the guy like that, but it was the story just kind of piqued my attention. I was like, man, this dude has a lot of baby mamas. He got a lot of kids. I was like, how many, more, how many more relationships does a person have to enter into to finally be satisfied? You know, you can't find true satisfaction until when God gives you that breath. And you feel it in the soul. It's different. It's not something superficial that, oh, I'm just, I'm just going through the motions. No, it's nothing like that. It's something that's a satisfaction that's going on on the inside. It's something perhaps that many people don't even understand or can see not with their, their eyes, but until the Lord fills your soul, until a person or a man or a woman gets filled with the Holy Ghost or, or just experience that real salvation, uh, that born-again experience, then, man, you, you, they just don't know what real living is. But God knows how to satisfy the soul. The psalmist declared in Psalm 42, verses 1 and 2, as the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee. Oh God. He says, my soul for, uh, he says, my soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My soul was, that's why we got, that's why we got saved. Because they, we were thirsty. We were searching. We, we tried so many times people, they tried different drugs or what have you. And, you know, even, even in this wicked world today, I'm not glorifying drugs at all. But man, even the drugs today are different. It, it, it just is. They, 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 lace stuff, they lace marijuana with all kinds of stuff, and they, sometimes they use that fentanyl, and, man, all it takes is just one hit. That's it. A lot of times these people, they don't get a second chance. That one hit, that's it. They're done. They're gone. Well, what are they doing? What are they going through? They're, they're, they're searching. I want to feel good on the inside. 
You want to feel good on the inside, get saved. (laughs) You want to feel good on the inside, get filled with the Holy Ghost. You want to feel good on the inside, allow God to breathe on you. Allow God to fill you with his love and fill you with his spirit and fill you with all those good things uh, that he has to offer. You know, the Lord is still in the business of giving people life. When you read about Jesus in the Gospels, everything revolves around life. Uh, whether it was Lazarus uh, who came back to life, and in that same chapter, John chapter 11, he says, I'm the resurrection and the life. In the book of John, that same book, in chapter 14, he says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And then in chapter six, he says, I'm the bread of life. Then he says, I'm the water of life. Everything around God revolves with life, uh, and that is exactly what we need when we come to him. We still need uh, that life. In the book of John chapter 10, he says, I'm the good shepherd. He also, he says that I come to you that you might have life, and that you might have it more abundantly. Not just a little bit, but abundant life. I don't want you to be uh, partially uh, satisfied. I don't want you to experience just a little, a a quarter of hope. No, I want you to experience everything. From time to time, I I think about, I think about in the book of, uh, I believe it was, was it in Exodus? When Moses was uh, there before God and, you know, he had a real relationship with with the Lord. He really did. I always admired that, his, his relationship with God. And he wanted to he wanted to see the glory of the Lord. And the Lord had to tell him, you know, um, pretty much if you if you see me face to face, you're you're not going to live because why the the glory of the Lord is just so powerful and so strong. And, you know, he's like, if you're not going to go with us, God, I I, I don't want to go. I want to be where you are. I want to be where your presence is. I want to be in your presence. And he was in the presence of the Lord and the Lord allowed him to see. The back side of him. Man, that, hey, that's good enough for me, too. I just want to experience something from God. I just want to experience a get, 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 a, get, get something from him because your, your life changes when, when you get in contact with God. There's a, there's a real change that, that takes place. And, and maybe people in the world, they look at the Christians like, man, these people are so old-fashioned. Why don't they just get with the times? Why don't they just, you know, we, we need some other stuff in the church to get this thing popping. We don't need nothing else in the church to get this thing popping. This thing is already popping. <laughs> Every time the Holy Ghost comes on the scene, uh, it's already popping. How many times uh, you've been in a church service and you just feel the presence of the Lord? Maybe you're coming there kind of just dragging your face all over the ground. And man, by the time the, the first song cranks up, those hands go worshiping him and you just, oh my goodness, this is what I have need of. I've been feeling down in my spirit, but thank God for his breath because he's breathing on me right now. How many times uh, you read the word of God and you're so in inspired or how many times uh, you're in a church service and you just feel the presence of God oh God I needed this I remember a time they can come to the instruments I remember one time I was I know I'm sure I was going through something and I went to a fellowship meeting man by the time I don't even know if the choir maybe the choir got out they may have got out two or three words in a song I don't know And man, my hands were up in the air and I was just crying and praising and worshiping God. I mean, it didn't take that long because my heart was so ready to just receive something from God. We need God to breathe on us. There's nothing like the presence of the Lord. There's nothing like the breath of God. What about it tonight with heads bowed and eyes closed in reverence to Almighty God? Whatever you have need of, Whatever you may be facing or going through, God can help you. He can bless you. He can give you a fresh start. Just allow the good Lord to breathe on you and feel his presence and feel his spirit. Father, I thank you for your mercy and your grace. I thank you, God, for the service tonight. And God, my prayer is that you would just continue to have your way in the rest of this service. Lord, let your will be accomplished in every heart and life. God, do something special. Do something miraculous. God, breathe on your people right now. Meet every need. In the name of Jesus, amen. The altar is open. Let's all find a place to pray and spend time with the Lord. Let God talk to you tonight. He's here.